this video is our investigation on arithmetic sequences. So first of all, let's just start out with what is a sequence. A sequence is just an ordered list that follows a set pattern. It can be all sorts of different patterns. But an arithmetic sequence is a sequence with a constant common difference, or in plain language, where you add a certain number to get from term to term. So it, I do say arithmetic instead of arithmetic. That's because it's an adjective describing the sequence. Um, arithmetic is a noun. Anyway, uh, arithmetic sequence is one where you always add the same number to get to the next term. So let's look at a couple examples here. We start out in this first sequence, sequence with two, and then we go to four, and then six, and then eight, and then 10, and then 12. So what are we doing every time? Every time we're adding two to get to the next term. So we call this an arithmetic sequence, and we say the common difference, which we just call D, is equal to two. In the next example, we start with the number 10. Then we go down to four, then two, I'm sorry, then negative 2, then negative 8, then negative 14. So what are we doing every time? Is this arithmetic? Well, the first time to get from 10 to 4, I subtract 6 or add negative 6. Does that same pattern continue? Yes, I add negative 6, add negative 6, add negative 6. So this is an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of negative 6. So we don't really think of subtraction patterns. We think of adding a negative. All right, so you can go ahead and pause the video while you try number one and two, these sequences down here. We want you to determine whether the sequence is arithmetic or not. If it is arithmetic, find the common difference, and then list the next three terms in the pattern. So go ahead and pause the video while you try that. All right, so in number one, we subtracted three every time to get the next term. So yes, it was arithmetic with a common difference of negative three. And the next three terms would be negative one, negative four, and negative seven. In sequence number two, we added five every time. So that was arithmetic with a common difference of five. And our next three terms would be 25, 30, and 35. On to the next part. The missing terms in an arithmetic sequence are called arithmetic means. So for example, find the arithmetic mean of 13 and 19. What this means is that you have to make a pattern. Where 13 is the first term, it would be an arithmetic pattern, there's a term missing, and then 19 is the next term. Since it's arithmetic, rewrite it over here a little bigger, we have 13 to 19. What would I do every time I would add the common difference to get to the next term. So if I'm following this out mathematically, if I start with 13, I'd add two common differences to get to 19. So now I can figure out what the common difference is. I would subtract 13 from both sides and then divide both sides by two, and that gives me my common difference of three. The question didn't ask for the common difference though, the, common, the question asked to find the mean. So if I took 13 and I added three to it, the middle term would be a 16. That's the arithmetic mean and the answer to the question. Just make sure that you check. If I add three again, would that give me 19? If so, I know my pattern is good. All right, so a lot of you would have thought, well, the mean, that's just the average. And if I do 13 plus 19 divided by two, I get 16. So that is a mean that way. And you could do the problem that way. But we don't always ask for one arithmetic mean. In the next question, it asks you to find three arithmetic means of two and negative 22. That means we start with the number two, and then we have three missing numbers to get to negative 22. Using our method of logic, where we just add the common difference every time to get the next term, how could I figure out how to get from two to negative 22? If I start with two, I'm going to add one, two, three, four common differences to get to negative 22. This method will work for any number of differences. So I just need to solve my equation by subtracting two from both sides and then dividing both sides by four. So I get my common difference is negative six. So let's make sure this works. If I subtract six from two, that gives me negative four. Subtract 6 again gives me negative 10. Subtract 6 again gives me negative 16. Subtract 6 one last time, does that give me negative 22? Yes, it does. So my answer, the three arithmetic means, are negative 4, negative 10, and negative 16. 
Pause the video while you try number four. Okay, in this problem, if I started with negative 18, I would have had to add the common difference five times to get to 62. I solve for D to get a common difference of 16. Then I go back to my pattern and I add 16 repeatedly to get my four common differences of negative 2, 14, 30, and 46. I check just to make sure if I add 16 one more time, it gives me 62, which it does, so I know my pattern is arithmetic. This next section is about recursive and explicit formulas and notation. All right, so the nth term of a sequence is written as a sub n. We say a sub n because the little n down low there is a subscript. So n is the number of the term, like 5 for the fifth term, and a sub n is the actual term or the number that's in the pattern. So we have a sequence right here, the one we started with, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. What is a sub 1? a sub 1, the first term, would be 2. That's the first term of the sequence. What is a sub 2? That's the second term in the sequence, which would be 4. So this is just the notation we use with the subscript. All right, so it says fill in the missing names in the sequence. Well, a sub 1 is the first, a sub 2 is the second, a sub 3rd, and then we have the dot, dot, dot here. So what's missing? Well, if a sub n is the nth term, the term that would be before the nth term, or going backwards, the little n would be one less than the one for a sub n. So this would be a sub n minus one. Like with the second term, the term before it was the first term. One is one less than two. Well, what about the term after it? The term after it, the subscript number is one bigger, like going from a sub two to a sub three. So this would be a sub n plus one, would be the term after the term you want. In both of these things, the little n plus one or the n minus one was all a subscript. You're not really subtracting anything from something. You're just saying that a sub n minus one is the term before the a sub nth term. So a recursive formula for a sequence is a rule that defines a new term based on previous terms like a sub n minus one. So, Here's an example. To get the nth term of the sequence, 2, 5, 8, 11, we can use the rule a sub n to get the nth term. Take a sub n minus 1, that's the term before the nth term, and then what are we going to do? We're going to add 3 to it, because every time in this pattern, you start out and you add 3 to get the next term. This is the way our brain usually thinks of patterns. We think recursively. What do we do to get the next one? The fourth term, um, to get the fourth term, sorry, we take the third term and add three. So how do we get this 11? We said, take the third term and add three to it, or take eight and add three to it, which is 11. On a formula sheet, we have the recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence is a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus d, where a sub n minus 1 is the previous term and d is the common difference. You do have a formula sheet that you'll be using whenever you need to know these. It should just make sense really though. All right, the thing with recursive formulas is that we can tell you what the pattern is, what you add every time, but if we don't tell you where to start, then you have no basis. So let's start out, and in the top here, it says a sub 1 equals 12. That tells me the first term is 12. In any recursive sequence, we always have to give you a starting point or you won't know where to go. Then it says a sub n to get the nth term that equals a sub n minus 1. That was the term before it. And then what are we going to do every time? We are going to subtract 7. In other words, if I take 12 and I subtract 7 from that, that's going to give me 5, which is now the next term. This says for n is greater than or equal to 2. You can sort of ignore that one. It's just telling you the domain that this only works for terms as we get bigger. 
Uh, they often put that on the SOL. I don't usually write it when I write a formula myself, but you should understand what it means. It just means that we can keep going to the second term, third term, fourth term, any n greater than or equal to 2. All right, so let's keep going with our pattern. To get the next term, we're going to just subtract 7 again. So 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Then we're going to subtract 7 from negative 2, which would give us negative 9. And then we're going to subtract 7 from negative 9, which would give us negative 16. All right, that's a recursive formula where you think of the previous term, do something to it to get the next term. The other type of formula we have is an explicit formula. Explicit formulas for a sequence are just like a function where you plug in any number n to get the nth term. So if you want the 50th term, you plug in 50. With a recursive, if you want the 50th term, you have to find all 49 terms before it to get the 50th. So we like to use explicit sequences formulas because they're nice and algebraic. So given the same sequence, 2, 5, 8, 11, we can use the rule a sub n. That means to get the nth term, 2 plus n minus 1 times 3. So in this one, the sequence starts at 2. 2 is our first term, so we're always going to start with 2. Then our common difference each time was 3. So every time I need to add a 3, how many 3s do I need to add? Well, I need to add n minus 1 3s because for the first term, I don't add any 3s. For the second term, I add 1 3. Then I add 2 3s, 3 3s, and so on. So I'm always adding one less than the number of term I'm on. And this is like a slope. All right. This formula is on our formula sheet. The explicit form for an arithmetic sequence is a sub 1 equals, I'm sorry, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d where a sub 1 is the first term, n is the number of the term that you want, and d is the common difference. So here we have a formula. a sub n equals 15 plus n minus 1 times negative 5. What are the first five terms? Well, we should recognize just from the formula that the first term is 15. If you were unsure of that, you could always plug in n equals 1 to our formula. If you plug in n equals 1 to the formula, when I go to do my multiplication, I'm 1 times 1 is 0, I'm sorry, 1 minus 1 is 0, so this part wipes out. I don't add any common differences at all. My first term is just 15. What is my second term? Well, to find the second term, I just plug in 2. So the second term is 15 plus 2 minus 1 times negative 5, or 15 plus negative 5, if I do my multiplication, is 10. 10 is the next term. We could also figure this out by knowing that negative 5 up here was my common difference, so I'm just subtracting 5 each time. You have a choice. You can either plug in 3, 4, and 5 for the fifth term, or you can just continue your pattern of subtracting 5. 10 minus 5 is 5, minus 5 is 0, minus 5 is negative 5. We could keep going on with that pattern. If they ask us something bigger, though, like what's the 21st term, then it's much more useful to just plug into the formula. a sub 21, or the 21st term, would be 15 plus 21 minus 1 times negative 5. Let's scoot this up a little. Uh, so I'd have 15 plus 20 minus 5, or 15 minus 100, which is negative 85, so my 21st term is negative 85. Again, an explicit formula is much easier to use this for than a recursive formula. All right, so here is a formula, 3, 7, 11, 15, and they want us to write a recursive and explicit formula for this one. So the first thing we need to know for recursive formula, it always starts out on the top with what does a sub 1 equal? Well, a sub 1 is 3, so I'm just going to start out, and I'm going to say a sub 1 equals 3. Then I use the formula on my sheet. Remember, the formula on my sheet was a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus d. So a sub n has got to stay a variable. That's the nth term. a sub n minus 1 has got to stay a variable. That's the previous term. And then I'm trying to say, what do I do every time to get the next term? Well, in each of these, to get the next term, I added 4. 
so my common difference is plus 4, and I'll just write that on the end here. You could put that n is greater than or equal to 2 on the end here. I don't usually write it, like I said. All right, let's do the explicit formula. The formula on the sheet for an explicit arithmetic sequence is a sub n is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. All right, so I start out and I leave a sub n in my formula. That has to be a variable because I'm trying to find the nth term. My next thing in my formula was a sub 1. a sub 1 is the first term, which was 3, so I'm just going to plug that in. My next part of my formula is the plus n sub n minus 1. That's going to stay the same. n is the variable that I'm going to plug in to find the nth term. The last bit of the formula was to multiply by d. I can put a 4 on the end, I can put a multiply by 4, I can just write a 4, I can put the 4 in the parentheses, anything that shows a multiplying by 4. Just be careful, if the common difference is negative, you don't want to put minus something without putting it in parentheses, or it looks like you're subtracting rather than multiplying by a negative. So this is my explicit formula. Go ahead and pause the video while you turn the page and you try number 6. Okay, go ahead and check number six. Our first term was 13, our common difference was negative six, and those were the two things that we plugged into the recursive and the explicit formula. All right, you should be able to try number seven, eight, and nine. Um, let's start with you just trying number seven and eight real quick though, and then we'll pause the video afterwards and check them. Okay, for number seven, uh, the first five terms, I can just plug in for n into my formula. I can plug in one, two, three, four, five, or I can find the pattern that starts with 25, and then the next term was 35, 45, 55, 65, because I can tell from my formula right here, the common difference is 10. All right, to find the 11th term, I'm going to plug in 11, so a sub 11 puts 11 in for n in the formula, and I get 125. All right, on number eight, the common, or sorry, the first term was 12, so I go ahead and list that. Don't forget to list the first term. I know it's given, it's kind of a gimme one, but you still have to write it down. Then our pattern here is that we subtracted six every time to get the next term. So I just subtracted six to get six, zero, negative six, and negative 12. Okay, let's scroll down to number nine here, and we'll sort of set this one up together. The fifth term of an arithmetic sequence is, neg is 6, and the 11th term is 36. Well, I think it's best if you visualize these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The fifth term of a sequence is 6. Okay, then we've got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The 11th term is 36. I like to space it out like that so I can see what's going on. Well, I know that if I started with this 6, I would add the common difference over and over again until I got up to this 36. How many times would I add it? Well, I'd add it one.